Okay, so welcome to another tutorial brought to you by Heretic Studios and myself, Toko. Today I'm just going to have a quick little hint, really. Uh, I got asked today, actually, to go a little bit more in depth with the shapes tool or just really about shapes. Now, I've really explained shapes more than once before, but I figured I'll go a little bit more in depth and it can't hurt to just go a little bit more in depth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Photoshop and I'm going to go to File, New Document, everyone knows that. And I'm just going to go to one of my presets, I'm going to do 512 by 512. And that's another quick tip real quick actually. Uh, some people don't see this. If you have a common file dimension size or however you want to say it that you use, you can easily simply enter in the dimension you want. Say I wanted uh, 800 by 800 a lot. Or say I did, I don't know, iPod Touch wallpapers or something, so it would be 320 by 480. I could save the preset. And you can select what you want to save, and I'll just save all that, and I'll just save it as 320 by 40. Now if I go into my preset manager, oops, drop in here, you'll see that 320 by 480 is there. But I'm going to go back to 512 by 512, hit OK, and here is my document. So... I've said it before, but I'll go over it a little bit again. A shape is technically a vector layer within Photoshop. It's a color with a selection mask around it. It gives you sharper edges, and it's really the best thing to use if you're going to do like a little quick design or something like that. So the shape tool is located in this, right here in your palette in CS3, or CS2 would probably look a little bit more like this, and it's just it's default a rectangle tool, so you'll see that icon. And what you get is this toolbar up here with the default uh, square selected. And I'll zoom in a little bit. So you get these three little icons right here. The first one is a shapes layer, the second is a path, and the third is just a fill layer. I would really suggest you stay away from the fill layer. Uh, if you're going to use something like a fill, you're always going to be better off using a shape. So I'm just going to select the shape layer real quick. And I'm going to go into my square. And I'm just going to make sure I don't have any extra um, little options selected. And here's a little quick mention. As you can see, these are just quick little settings that are appear for every tool, say the rounded tool or a rounded uh, rectangle. You can do the same thing, uh, circle, circle draw diameter from center. Uh, if you want to make like an arrow, you can go to the line tool and you can set arrow heads. I'm going to turn it off right here. Um, custom, the custom polygonal, and, or custom tool. And then the polygonal, you can do a star or smooth the corners and etc. But I'm going to go back to my square. Make sure I have my shapes option. And I'm just going to drag out a shape. So, now, as you can see, over here in our Layers palette, there's a layer created called Shape 1, and it's just a color with a mask linked to it. It's a vector mask, and as I said earlier, it causes it to have really sharp edges. And that may not seem like much, but say you had a, I don't know, a quick logo. It was all in just rasterized layers, uh, filled layers, and you tried to enlarge it not so good. It'll be blurred and it just won't look good at all. Now I'm not saying with the shape that it's going to look awesome, but since it's a vector layer it's going to expand a lot better and all around it's just going to be a sharper image and be cleaner. But in reality if you're going to do vector I really wouldn't suggest Photoshop to do that vector in. I would suggest Adobe Illustrator. Now I'm by no means a professional in Illustrator. I can do a simple like text design or something like that, but I never really got acquainted with the whole vector world and Illustrator. I'm more at home in Photoshop. So, as a suggestion, though, if you <coughs> sorry about that, as a suggestion, suggestion, um, if you want to do vector, you're a lot better off doing Illustrator. So I'm going to go a little bit more in depth. A shape layer is more or less just like any other layer. You can go into it by double click or 
you know, right click, layer properties, you get properties, but we're going to go to layer styles. So we're just going to go to, you can do blending options, and here we go. So it's just like any other layer. It's treated just like any other layer. You can create drop shadows. Um, some of the effects aren't going to look as normal as they would on a standard rasterized uh, field layer. But over, all in all, you can create these effects simply just by adding them to any other layer. So say you had this, uh, I don't know, a square here, or you wanted to do, say, a logo like they used in uh, VMware Fusion, for instance. Here I'll go to my applications, and here's VMware Fusion. It's two overlapped squares to create arrows. Now, I'm not going to show how to do it, but I'll just do a little quick explanation with the shape tool. Go back to it. Uh, the hotkey for it is U, by the way, if you guys didn't figure that out by now. And as you can see, it's set as a style um, because I did some layer style options. I'm going to turn that off and get out of there and go back down. But say I wanted to just subtract, I don't know, this corner out of it. You can just hold down your option key or Alt on a PC and you can drag out. And as you can see, if you hold Alt, it's just like any selection tool and it's going to drag from the center. You don't want to do that. So let go of Option or Alt and just let go. And as you can see, uh, as with a path, which is just what this is, it causes it to disappear or I don't know, cut it out or, you know, just take it away. So I'm going to undo that real quick. In the same instance, you can add shapes to the layer just by holding your shift key and you can add to it. And if you hold shift and continue to, as you can see, it constrains, but just let go and it's added. Now it's not just adding to this specific path. You can see they're overlapping right here. And in the thumbnail, you can really see that, if you zoom in, the paths are actually overlapping. So it's not just taking the shape present and modifying it, it's actually adding a shape over it. But say you wanted a new shape over that, and you don't want to modify the current layer, just drag out one without holding any modifier keys, which would be, you know, Command, Option, or Shift, and you'll get that. And another quick hotkey is Command, is just a direct selection tool, which lets you drag a path around, which is basically what this is. You can edit the points. Oops. Should be able to edit the points anyway. Go over here into your direct selection tool, or path selection tool. Go to the direct selection tool. And I can just drag over this point, and I can edit the mask or the path any way I like. Now, the hot key for this, as you can see if you hover over it, is A. And you can just select in between. The path lets you select just the general paths. So I can select the object, move it around. Direct allows you to go in more depth and select the points. So that's basically been a tutorial or a quick tutorial on shapes. Um, another quick bit though is if you wanted to change the color quickly, you just double click on the thumbnail and will open up your color picker window. So you want it to be a red. Hit OK and there is your shape. So that's been a quick tutorial on shapes or really just a tip episode. If you want to see more, uh, I would really appreciate it if you guys would send in ideas or suggestions on future episodes, long or short. If I'll do as long as it needs to be, if it needs to be an hour, I could do a tutorial that needs to be an hour. Uh, it'd be subdivided, of course, but I'll get to the point and I'll explain it the best I can. So if you guys have any ideas, feel free to send them through my email address, which is in the video description. And till next time, this has been Toko, and have a good night.